Welcome back. Glad you are still with us. This is still Good Morning Kenya and we are on our lifestyle conversation all about modern forms of farming and most of the urban kitchen gardens that uh, Njoki has been uh, venturing or rather has been offering services in for the past year or so. And we just want to pick up this conversation as we draw to a close. Now, um, getting back to what you can and what you cannot plant looking at the garden at uh, the kitchen garden space and we're talking about a standard balcony space for a standard apartment mm -hmm. what are some of those plants that you would advise our viewers this morning to plant and those that you would advise not to go that way because they would require more care and involvement okay yeah there are, there are those plants that i encourage uh, my clients to grow especially from the apartment balconies uh, one of them most of them are the vegetables, grow mm -hmm. vegetables, especially those that you eat raw. Because it also means you eating healthy and it means you buying, you are not having to buy those vegetables that you do, you are not sure where they came from, yes. but you are getting them right from your balcony. Mm -hmm. So, so this, some of these are like lettuce, um, we have what we call the spinach, you can get your spring onions. Uh, you can grow a bit of strawberries from your balcony. You you could grow kales. Mm -hmm. You could grow um, this what we call Chinese cabbage. It's it's an it's this the, the, kilo the, yes, one. That's, ah. yes, that one would also do very well from okay. your balcony. Uh, you can also do other vegetables. You know, amaranth mm -hmm. like terreres. Your traditional vegetables. They are a bit hardy mm -hmm. and easy to grow as well. You, you know, your terreres, your managus, your all those. Eh? Traditional yes. greens. So grow vegetables mm -hmm. and some fruits from your balcony because they are easy to grow. Mm -hmm. um, like which ones would you recommend? Just, we want to hear a like eh. this one, okay, nitenda kutafuta hiyo. Uh, the, ve the vegetables, the fruits, uh, the, fruits yeah. Yeah. The, the strawberries. Okay. Strawberries are the easiest to grow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, you could go do pepinos mm -hmm. uh, from your balcony. You could grow if you if you're able to run the runners. You could grow passion mm -hmm. fruits along. Uh, run balcony it around rails. Uh, balcony yeah. rails. Okay. Or get something to run it on. Mm -hmm. It's also easy to grow, and you will. There are those factors that you need to consider as well, mm -hmm. especially for the fruits, because fruits go through a process of flowering, and flowering requires some sunlight. Mm. So, 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 so you will need to check that your balcony is receiving at least six to eight hours of sun per day so that you grow those ones. But vegetables we do with four to six hours of sun and they will be okay. All right. Yeah. And then there are also those that you, I will, I will, I will say do not grow them per se, but not they encouraged. will, yeah, not encourage. You can grow sugar cane, uh, melon. Of course, <laughs> they, need, yeah. they require more. They require more space and also they will be tedious and f f the, the benefits, the benefits of it is, um, you cannot compare it to having vegetables where mm. you're harvesting almost on a daily basis. So your spring onions or your other, other, other frequent, uh, the, the, the things you eat frequently, fre frequently within yes. your kitchen. Yeah. All right. Now, as we close, the very last question for a viewer this morning. Mm -hmm. They have watched this discussion and they are convinced. I'm going to say, and end up after the materials that they need to start. Yeah. yeah. What? does anyone the basics that you need to set up your balcony farm yes the basics that you need one is the structure mm -hmm. uh, sorry number one is the space you need some space so you need to have a balcony yes you have that you need to have that space number two is a structure mm -hmm. so you need to decide if you are going to do a wooden structure and there's a way it is done so that you're proofing it from rotting and also you're proofing it from um termites and other things mm. so there is that you could also do uh containers um they are they are, they are planters that are sold for that and you could also recycle containers so you can have a couple of uh, that, that's what we are calling the structures number three you will need now the planting medium mm -hmm. which which in our case at alpha plants we encourage that you use organic compost organic compost is decomposed matter decomposed organic matter you bring together trees and all that whatever is gathered and and let it decompose that mm -hmm. is what we encourage for a kitchen garden uh for an organic kitchen garden in particular uh the other thing that you need is the seedlings and seedlings you can grow your own seedlings or you can get them from from the people that uh, 
do the propagation the seedlings mm -hmm. uh, you can contact us for that and 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 we'll be able to assist or you can grow them you you, you if you walk into your agrovet they'll be able to sell to you the seedling the seedlings for the vegetables or the fruits that you need yes and and and, and probably guide you on um, the way to grow them the way to help them germinate and grow into seedlings mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 you will be you'll be able to now put together all that and come up with a garden all right yeah, yeah. So. the other f uh, I would say basic factors that you need to consider as you come up with a garden. Mm -hmm. One is the lighting. You need because any plant for it to grow to grow properly, it goes through a process of photosynthesis, mm -hmm. and you need sunlight to be. Sunlight is the best is the best natural um, factor for growing a vegetable and uh, helping it to, to to be healthy. The other one is the watering. If you're not available to water, please make sure somebody is watering because water is essential for plants. Yes. And uh, the last one is the planting medium. Make sure the planting medium has all the nutrients. Whether you're using soil or compost or whatever you're using, make sure it is well enhanced and rich enough to be able to grow a plant. All right. Yes. I think with that, we are empowered. We are encouraged to go ahead mm -hmm. and start our balcony farms, mm -hmm. again, adapting to these times that we are in. And it helps cut, cut costs. Yes. Especially on these veggies that mm -hmm. we buy on a mm -hmm. daily. You can mm -hmm. pandai your onions, mm -hmm. your lettuce, mm -hmm. your traditional greens, mm -hmm. your strawberries, mm -hmm. and feed your babies as a snacks. Mm -hmm. But due to the constraint of time, we will have to put a comma there. Uh, we will continue. We will be having her again to just look at, you know, the other aspects of mm. alpha plants, you know, looking at landscaping and indoor plants. Kuna plants hazifai kuka kwa nyumba, my people. But we are here adopting and becoming plant parents and you wonder why your plants are dying. It is because you could be taking in the wrong plant into the household space. But of course we will have that con uh, conversation in um, all consecutive uh, programs. But for now, thank you so much Njoki for being with us today. We have been speaking with Njoki Kamau who is the founder of Alpha Plants and she's also a plant enthusiast. So remind us your social handles once more. Yes, uh, I am a available on Facebook as Njoki Kamau. Mm -hmm. uh, my business is Alpha Plants on Facebook. On Instagram, we are Alpha underscore Plants, K-E. All right. Yes. So check them out in case you need any more guidance to help you as you venture into urban kitchen gardens. Doreen. <laughs> I feel so encouraged. Nina fikiria ka balkoni kangu. Wenye nitashuha tu pota po juu. Zinyeteka hapo chini, lakini niko na mtoto. Yeah, yes. plants beautify your house. Mm -hmm. Doreen, ni naambi uko sign language. <laughs> Leo, u, I think okinya likasirika, aka kumute uko juu. <laughs> but nonetheless, we do encourage you guys to take on some of these um, solutions to farming. It could help cut down on costs on things that um, you need on a daily and you always have to buy size nyanya. One is going for 15 bob. Billy 25. If you can find a way of being your own manufacturer and source of tomatoes. Why not? Have your spring onions over there. You can always go this direction. I always say conquer the mind, conquer the body. Once you believe it, you'll be able to do it. Adopt and adapt. language interpreter. Akosawa Mr. Director. I love that mantra, by the way. Adopt and adapt. Adapt just reminds me like of how I like to say, what is for you is for you. But again, like I was saying, that was a beautiful conversation, at least for Kenyans to understand. Just because you've seen like a space there doesn't mean now you need to grow anything, mm. you know, for beauty or for, uh, for your own consumption. At least you understand what needs to be in place, what kind of foods you can grow, what kind of plants you can grow. You know, it's, it's good insight to have a understanding on the things that you want to do even as a person regardless. Absolutely. All right, so it's that time for again a quick look on what is happening on our roads in terms of traffic before we get to our next conversation on matters entertainment. So how about we check at how University Way is looking like just to very quickly try to see if at all we can get those other alternative routes. You can remember that earlier on there was really heavy kind of traffic, especially um, 
along Nyerere Road, which is again one of those good, good alternative routes for those uh, using this particular roundabout. But also there's another one that is State House Road, also one of those uh, sleep roads there, which all the time also is a very, very good alternative route, route again, also for those coming from areas around the Valley Road there. And this is how it is looking like this morning. Also, just like Nyerere, one of those roads that does not um, cater or serve public vehicles. So this is also one of those reasons as to why there's usually not kind, there's no that kind of heavy, heavy traffic along most of these sleep roads on this particular place what we're looking at. And uh, what, I, what I'm also seeing along Nyerere, at least right now things have opened up. So yes, it's a bit of a great lock, but at least a manageable kind of traffic altogether. Hence that orange color there. So you can still use this as your good alternative route if you're coming from a university roundabout, coming from city center, if at all you're going to those areas which you just mentioned earlier. And also, if you are uh, still um, heading over to, this is around Uhuru Highway, so coming from Mayaki Way all through, you can still use that as the alternative route. Also on the other side of University Way, this is past Kipani Road. Again, things have opened up all together. But then, this is one of those roundabouts, just like Kenyatta Avenue, Haile Selassie, where traffic police never miss. And this is to try and see how best they can control traffic because there's, they are also one of those major, major roundabouts, as I've kept saying. And on the other side, again, of University, we green all through as well. No traffic at all. And the beauty is that this is actually on both lanes. So on this specific road, when I'm talking about both lanes, it just simply means as you leave Areas around Moy Avenue, Globe Roundabout, Muranga Road, areas around Kipande Road coming to the other side of city centre via Uhuru Highway. And also on the other section as you leave areas around State House, Nyerere, Wayaki Way and the other section of Uhuru Highway as you get to the other side of CBD around Moy Avenue area. So this is what I just, I'm just actually meaning when I'm talking about both lanes. And this is how it is looking like. Green all through, just again on some sections here and there um, uh, next to the round about where there's a bit of a traffic and look at that this has just changed right now this has changed this very minute this is the university way uh, on, uh, on that area before you get to the roundabout where it's just where it has actually just begun to uh, build up moving at a very very um very very slow pace this is how it is looking like this morning on the other side of uhuru highway still at least green all through moving at a very very um fast pace no traffic at all on that particular section and uh, still also before you get to the kenyatta avenue roundabout still you know moving at a also fast pace just a bit of a gridlock there on that particular roundabout and this is how it is looking like in terms of traffic um <clears throat> This morning, we have been keenly trying to focus on what has been happening around or along the university we're on the board, and also just try to look at some better alternative routes for those using that particular stretch. And that is how we bring the traffic to a close this morning. However, we are not yet done with Good Morning Kenya. It is now time for our next conversation. This morning, being Entertainment Thursday, we, we are looking at the gospel space in this country, the evolution of the gospel industry. And on set, we are joined by Joshua Moracha, who is a gospel artist. Joshua, good morning. Morning to you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. You were in a band before you at least began doing solo music, right? Yep, yep. So how was it like for you and how can you compare being in a band and doing solo music? Um, being in a band gives you uh, a good background for musicianship. Uh, now that uh, it's a setup where you, you learn a lot from your mates. But now when you go independent, you go independent with uh, some sort of experience gained from the band. Yeah. So when you go independent, at least you have some experience that you get from the band. For you, which kind of experience have you gotten so far that you've carried along even as you're doing solo music? Yeah, um, being in a band, I used to be an instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really comes in handy when I'm producing my own music. Yeah. Because at the same time, I write and produce and record myself mm -hmm. in the studio. So, you know, that comes in handy when, you know, playing an instrument and uh, doing that for my own music. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good experience you've gotten just from being in a band. Yeah. So how would you rate, you know, just working as a team or teamwork? Because sometimes they say it's not as easy to work as a team. First of all, because could we could be having different personalities. Mm -hmm. Maybe we mm -hmm. want to go to different areas. You know, what, how you're seeing things, not how I'm seeing mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. How was it like for you just being in that space, the teamwork aspect and mm -hmm. again, being in a group? Yeah, you know, being in a group would, uh, it has its pros and cons. Yeah. No, but then in terms of decision making, I want to do my music now, I want to record this time, becomes a little bit difficult moving um, as, you know, 
as, as, as a group. Mm -hmm. But when, when you go so low, you say, I want to record next week, you do it. Yeah. I want to shoot a video next week, you do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a little bit easy when it comes to, you know, making steps. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that working solo is better <laughs> than <laughs> no, working? I, because I, I like also they say, you know, you can only go far mm -hmm. by yourself. You mm -hmm. can go as far beyond, yeah. you know, with, with people, with mm -hmm. a team. Yeah, sure. That's true. Like I said before, uh, you, there's pros and cons for everything. Yeah, true. Yeah, but in terms of, you know, making steps and decisions, it's easier when you do it alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you go solo, that is. Oh, okay. So are you still <coughs> in the band in as much as they're doing solo, or are you just left all together? Yeah, I'm still, uh, I'm still in a band. The instrumentalist? Yeah, the instrumentalist. Okay. But largely now I'm concentrating on solo music, mm -hmm. but I sing with my wife. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Even mm -hmm. so that collab you'll be telling <laughs> us in a short while. <laughs> in a short while a bit about that yeah. song. But again, in the band you were an instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. Now you are singing. Mm -hmm. Was it like a transition for you or you just knew that by the way, actually as much as I'm playing instrument, mm -hmm. I'd also want to write music <laughs> and do music later. Yeah, you know now, being in a band would mean that uh, every, there's something for everybody. Yeah. You, you won't go taking other people's places. Mm -hmm. So it would make more sense sticking to an instrument than playing and singing at the same time mm -hmm. because we had people who could sing but not play an instrument. Okay. So I would fill just the gap of an instrumentalist mm -hmm. but let the people who can just sing, sing mm -hmm. so that we, we don't duplicate roles. Okay. Yeah. Now let's come to your music. Mm -hmm. So when did you actually begin singing? Because I'm seeing also the song you've done in your dialect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you really begin singing and uh, what really informed you to actually just start doing music per se? Because again, also you could have decided, you know, in as much as there was an instrumentalist here, I'd still want to continue playing mm -hmm. instruments mm -hmm. as opposed to just writing and yeah. you know, singing. Um, my dad is an inspiration behind my music. That's beautiful. And uh, he taught me piano while back when I was seven. Mm -hmm. So I began doing commercial music, like playing in weddings when I was ten. But my parents could. Oh, get, so tender. Yeah, my parents could get paid for it. Ah. Yeah, so. Uh, I get my background and inspiration from both my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've you've said that you know your parents could even pay for for you at that age of seven, eight, ten, mm -hmm. which is actually brings that whole aspect of support. Yeah, which is one thing that you'd hear, especially most artists saying that this is one thing I actually missed. I wish yeah. I had support from mm -hmm. my parents mm -hmm. or from my spouse or from people that are close oh, yeah, to oh, me. Yeah, oh, yeah. So for you, this support system, how how would you say has really helped you grow? Mm -hmm. as an artist or as a singer? Yeah, you know, flowing against current is a little bit difficult, mm -hmm. much as it would make you stronger or grow some muscle in a way. Yeah. But then it's much more easier when there's a support system, especially from people who you look up to, in this case, my parents. Mm -hmm. So they would give me time for school and time for music. Mm -hmm. Which is, beautiful. Which is beautiful. So if, would you say like parents need to actually understand <laughs> that, you know, some, it's, it's not always about the nine to five. You can oh, yeah, actually, oh, yeah, you oh, know, yeah, sure. do your passion and, and, and what you love. Yeah, very important. Talking also about people that you look up to and you've mentioned mm -hmm. your parents. So does it mean that they were your mentors or you had people that you were, what you were working with that perhaps would guide you on how to do and write music? Yeah, I grew up in the Tanzanian border. Okay. And uh, my dad used to love choirs a lot. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, rich music in terms of learning to be a lyricist, to be an instrumentalist. Those people really play good music up to date. Mm -hmm. You can tell there's way lots of difference between their music and our music. Yeah. There's a lot of maturity content, prowess and everything. Mm -hmm. So listening to their music at the border, I, I really looked up to their kind of production. Mm -hmm. It was really wholesome. So I'd really love for my music to be, you know, rich in content. Mm -hmm. Someone should learn from what you're singing. Yeah. So, you know, come to think of it, when you're in the elementary stages of schooling, music is the only method teachers could, mm, um, could, use. Yeah, could use to let people who've never gone to school learn something, yeah. like sing and sing and sing. So I thought of using this music to, you know, uh, put my content and pass a message to my audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means your dad was your mentor? Definitely. definitely. Uh, have you changed that all <laughs> through? Because again, also you've learned that music is not static. Mm -hmm. It's very dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's oh, yeah, changing oh, yeah, all yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you might need someone who perhaps uh, has been in all these phases of the gospel space in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. did you change your mentor? Or did you get someone to walk you through perhaps in the difference and how music is changing? Yeah, largely I've uh, been looking up to some international music icons. Mm. Talk of R. Kelly, talk of Lucky Dube the Late, talk of Celine Dion. They have some sort of...
beautiful touch. These are not even gospel yeah. musicians. <laughs> yeah, they're not go gospel musicians. But you know, music is an international yeah, language. Yeah. yeah, it's just an instrument of passing across a message. Mm -hmm. So it's you to choose how to use your music. Mm. Yeah. And I think that is very important for you to mention because that's why I actually said they are not gospel yeah, artists, but yeah, these are people not. that you look up to in yeah, regards to, to say your mentor. Because <coughs> also, there's that aspect of if I'm a gospel musician, mm -hmm. you know, gospel musicians need to be my mentor. <laughs> and there are so many reasons that oh, people yeah. would give. You know, mm -hmm. there's the mm -hmm. word, there's the way in which they guide it. And like mm -hmm. those that sing either contemporary oh, yeah. or secular music. Mm -hmm. But you're coming with a different view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important that way because there's something to learn from everyone. Mm -hmm. And largely, if you listened to the late Lucky Dube, may he rest in peace, yeah. I learned that he was not uh, a stereotype gospel musician, but he would do more better than some people who, you know, attribute themselves as gospel, to, yeah, as gospel yeah. musicians. Yeah, because again, also there's that <laughs> aspect of people are just seeing mm -hmm. for the sake of, like, I just want to not be called a oh, secular yeah. artist, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but it's not really that I'm really, really gospel. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> as you're saying that's it, so how would you describe yourself? Gospel artist, gospel singer, gospel minister? Um, I am a musician who, who would, uh, you know, I describe myself as someone who wants to pass positive message. Positive yeah, message. Educational music, largely. Mm -hmm. You know, strictly gospel music. Mm -hmm. Neither is it secular. Mm -hmm. You know, secular is, you know, so worldly. Somewhere in between, a bit of the con contemporary kind of music style. Yeah, just educational stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Educational stuff. Mm -hmm. So more of positive music. Positive then, music. Then what exactly then inspires your content? How then do you go about creating your content? Because you just... Rightly put it, you're not mm -hmm. a gospel mm -hmm. musician per se, yeah, per se, not a secular artist. Yeah. At least you do like sort of like music for our society. Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it right. Mm -hmm. I'd love to pass across messages of hope, messages of you know, the yeah, messages of hope, messages of um, is it correctional messages? If to you change call it, so behavior, yeah, to change behavioral behavior. yeah, kind yeah, of music. Yeah. Okay. And let us love each other better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wouldn't want us to finish this conversation without talking about your song, mm -hmm. Ogo. Ogo Te Viri. Eh, ah, I can see what just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that was your first single? <laughs> yeah, that was my first. And you chose to do it in your dialect? Yeah, yeah. Why? Um, charity begins at home. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was easy doing it that way. Mm -hmm. So then would you describe your style as just trying to do music that perhaps is either uh, geared towards your where you come from or mm -hmm. you plan to diversify as you continue doing music? Yeah, I have a number of uh, I have a number of songs mm -hmm. yet to be sung in dialect. Oh. I'll keep singing in dialect okay. there on because I'll not cease being kissy uh -huh. much as I go international or you know national either way. Uh. I still have a message for my people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Also, I loved your song, Ni Nacho. Yeah, Ni Nacho. I, don't, I think for me, it was just <laughs> the voices. And also, it's, it's so interesting that when I went to look at the comments, it was just mm -hmm. like the blend and the voice is mm -hmm. so beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Talk to us a bit about that song, because also it's your latest yeah. song. And yeah, it's you my sang latest with song. your wife. Yeah, I sang with my Tell wife. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, matter of fact, I was supposed to sing it with some, some kid mm -hmm. I, uh, I met in the streets. Um, the kid I met in the streets, uh, his name is Clayton. Mm -hmm. We kind of stayed together for some time. Mm -hmm. And I got the inspiration of the message of the Ninacha song mm -hmm. from meeting this young man. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, sharing love, sharing the little we have, mm -hmm. you know, there's always something to share. Mm -hmm. It could be love, it could be material, it could be, you know, in word, mm -hmm. in kind. Yeah, so Ninacha is largely a song to talk about giving out whatever it is to make life better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Giving out whatever it is to make life better. Yeah. You know, when we return, we'll come back to talk more about especially uh, the digital space. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. even when COVID came, you would hear a lot of artists, you know, complaining. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was it all true. made sense. Mm -hmm. But right now, in as much as the country was opened up, you still hear that a lot of people from those particular, especially those three areas, the mm -hmm. tourism, hotel, and the entertainment as a whole, mm -hmm. still business is not going mm -hmm. back very the way true. it was. Very it's true. A, it's a, at a very, very slow rate and slow pace. Mm -hmm. So perhaps for you as an artist, what are the things you've been doing, how the digital space has helped you to just put your content out there? Mm -hmm. That is what we'll be coming to discuss after this short break. So you really want to just stay tuned to understand also what you can do as a person for those in the entertainment space. Stay with us.